I'm Mark Allen, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. In the last episode on our Nutrient and Nutrient Control with Dr. Tim series, we talked about nitrates and phosphates and how they affect your tank. In this episode, we're going to talk about a nutrient control method that's very popular. And there's some big misconceptions about this nutrient control method that have been thrown around online. That nutrient control method is the use of algae for nutrient export. And algae for nutrient export is used in too many ways, with refugiums and algae turf scrubbers. Now, the science behind it is the same, so I'm going to turn to Dr. Tim to let him explain how that works. Well, I mean, algae need, like everything else, they need nitrogen, they need phosphorus. So if you add light in an area for the algae to grow, they're going to remove a certain amount of phosphate and nitrate from the aquarium. Now you said export. The, this is a key difference in that you, the aquarist, have to do the final step. You have to get rid of that algae. Someone has to harvest that algae out of an aquarium. So what happens if we don't export that algae? We don't harvest it? Well, eventually one of the nutrients, nitrate or phosphate, or I mean, we're not even talking micronutrients, we'll talk about what I call the bigger ones, phosphate and nitrate. One of those is become, going to become limited. So then the algae is going to stop growing, and in fact, it's going to start dying. When it dies, it decays, our bacteria friends start decaying it, and it release, releases those nutrients back into the system. So basically, all you did was temporarily convert nutrients into algae, the algae died and it released it all back, so you didn't accomplish anything. People often assert that you can make your tank ultra low nutrients with turf scrubbers and refugiums. That is, getting your nitrates and phosphates down to undetectable levels. Do you believe that? No, I don't think you can make your system ultra low nutrient with a refugia because basically the, the algae growing in the refugia or the, are, or the plants, they're going to get limited. You're going to probably reduce the phosphate to a, a low level. I don't know that it'll be ultra low, but once that happens, the system stops. And so your nitrates will build up. But what if we're exporting algae and exporting algae frequently? Could we get our tanks to ultra low nutrients then? I don't, th I don't think you could strip it down just because you, you'd have to almost have a machine and at some point, I mean, balancing that, I think, would be very hard. Plus, algae have, they, they extrude things, and there's always going to be something there dying. I mean, if, if you really engineered the system, but most refugia I see are, are not really highly engineered, and there's just zones there that aren't going to work. So, theoretically, I, it's not impossible. Practically, I'd say you're just never going to get there. I've also heard that if you have a refugium or an algae turf scrubber that you don't need a protein skimmer. Is that true? Well, uh, no, that's, I have no idea why he would say that. Because, you know, refugia are not new. Um, there, there's, people have used those a lot. And, and the problem with using algae or some type of, of marine plant in a refugia is that they extrude, ex, extrude organics. That's why the water starts to turn yellow. I mean, if you have a lot of algae in your water, eventually the water looks discolored. And that's because of the organics. And if you don't get rid of those organics, there's actually about a, a negative feedback, especially on the bacteria. And you've got all sorts of other substances they're producing that are basically going to pollute the system. So you, you definitely need a skimmer. I'm not a fan of over skimming and I'm as you probably have heard from my talks I don't like skimming 24 hours a day but you need to get rid of organics in aquariums and that skimmer is the best skimmer in activated carbon. We've debunked the myth that if you have a refugium or a turf scrubber then you can make your tank ultra low nutrients and we've shown why the idea of not needing a protein skimmer because you have a refugium or a turf scrubber is simply bad advice. In fact you're probably going to want a protein skimmer more if you have a turf scrubber or a refugium because that algae is going to tint your water. Now drawing on personal experience, the other drawbacks of refugiums is that unless you have a big one, it's just not going to do much for nutrient export. Most people in fact are limited in space. How many refugiums, and some for that matter, do we see underneath the tank? Therefore, if you have a small one, 
you're not going to get that much horsepower out of it. As I've said for years, having a small refugium is like strapping an outboard motor to a cruise ship and then wondering why you aren't going anywhere. If you like the idea of running a refugium, look, knock yourself out. Just know it's not going to get that much done for you in terms of nutrient export. So therefore, if we need good nutrient export, what's the solution? Well, the best solution is actually bacteria. And Dr. Tim and I are going to talk to you more about that in the next episode. Because it's so powerful, we need to understand how it works and some really great ways to use it to get the nutrients down in your tank. Now, for those of you that are saying, well, I don't have a nutrient problem. I don't need to get my nutrients down. Using bacteria for nutrient export is also beneficial for your tank with coral growth and coral color. But as I said, we'll talk about that in the next episode. Till next time, I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.